when the flames of Pentecost came down and the people that hear the gospel preached, there were two responses. One response was um, to say they were just drunk. And the other response was to ask the question of meaning. What does this mean? And so what I want to say is if there is a movement going on in the church for justice, and if it's from God, if it's of the spirit, there are two responses. One is to do they're just drunk. It's, it's a way of saying, the African Americans and, and, the, mm -hmm. and the Latino and Latino brothers and sisters and my and my Asian American brothers and sisters, they're just cultural Marxists. They're just social justice warriors. They're just people trying to liberalize the church. That is the same thing that they did at Pentecost, where they used what they could see as an interpretive lens to dismiss what was going on. But the other person asked this question: What does this mean? And so, if you can ask the question. If there are all of these people who love the scriptures mm. and who love God's word are saying to you, we are suffering, not just individually, but from systems. Mm. What does this mean? And I, and I, I want to say this about, about, about systems. And I, I feel like I'm taking up all your time. Oh, no. Just, just keep going. I just want to say about systems. You want to talk about an individual sinner, right? An individual sinner. It, it, when you can, when someone who, who is a broken person takes that sinfulness into government or into business, they are able to spread the impacts of their individual sins into systems. And when you get a bunch of broken people running a bunch of economic systems, you know what you have? You have the sinfulness of humanity manifesting itself in social structures. So, the, so this idea that you can make a strong separation between individual sinners and systemic sin is a failure to understand how power works. Systemic oppression is nothing but the, 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 the expansion of individual wills into systems. And what I, what I want to say is this, the Apostle Paul, when the Apostle Paul talks about the ascension of Jesus, he says that Christ ascends above all things, above the principality and power and authority. And everyone who understands Jewish cosmology or the way the Jews hmm. understood the world, they thought that the spiritual powers were influencing individuals. And hmm. so if Jesus is above those spiritual powers, what they're saying is Jesus is above the spiritual powers who are running the systems of the world. So a Jewish cosmology hmm. assumes, yeah. assumes the brokenness of humans comes into the real lived experiences of the people, which is why when you turn, when you open the Bible and you see people like Isaiah, Isaiah talks about this housing policy. He mm -hmm. says it, woe to you who has house to house and field to field, so there's no room for anyone left in the mm -hmm. land. So what is Isaiah talking about? He's not talking about an individual person who's sinning. He's talking about the rich in Israel who are buying up all of the land so there's no place for the homeless. And I'm convinced that if Isaiah was walking the streets today, he would be called a social justice warrior. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is what we need in the church yes. right now is an understanding of a biblical idea. The individual sinners get in charge of systems, and those systems perpetuate inequalities that affect the people of God. And when that individual sinner leaves office, or retires from that business, the sin that he that he put in place there does not magically evaporate. Mm. It remains in place and is passed down through generation after generation after generation until the Christians stand up and mm. do something about it. Yeah. And doing that does not mean that you're beholden to Karl Marx. It means that you're beholden to the prophet Isaiah, the Psalters, and the sermons of Jesus. Wow. I'm done. That's homily over. You're done. Calm down. <laughs> 